We're going camping. We're going camping. We're gonna park by a shaded tree. We're gonna get a glass of sweet tea. And we're going camping. We got a fire in the pit. We're gonna roast marshmallows on a stick. We're going camping. Let's go see what camping's like here. Hey, hello fellow RVers. This is Gary and Sharon with Rough Road RV Life. We like looking at freedom, so where's freedom brought us? Well, we're driving into Catalina State Park here in uh, Arizona. Our destination is on the right, and that looks like the check-in station. So, we're going to pull in here to this check-in station, get checked in. And give you all a tour and let you see what this here park's all about. Okay, so there is the ranger station where we checked in. We pulled right up here and unhooked our towed vehicle right up somewhere along here. Over here at the dump station. Ah. Right there. Yeah, and there is a dump station. And this is the entrance road that takes you into the park. Now we were warned when we came in that the next three days are expecting rain and we might get flooded in the park and have to stay. So they provide they have a flood advisory. Right. So there was um, some information about that. There's no way to tell how much rain that will happen before it floods. But as you can see right through here, this is the flood area. This is said flood area. All this piles of dirt. So we are being um, optimistic that all will be well and we will not be stranded here. This crossing can be flooded up to several days. Right in, this is the bad part. Now I shall ask my other half, do we want to go to the campgrounds first or straight ahead to the other places? Well, let's go to the campgrounds first. We're going to get campgrounds first. Right. I imagine most people probably want to see the campgrounds first. We do that last usually, just because that's where we land back, but we'll go ahead and do these first. There's two loops, loop A and loop B, and they have the same numbers, so pay attention to which one you are. <laughs> Group A will be your electric and non-electric sites. Group B, and us, Loop B, will be electric sites. And beyond these two campgrounds, it's an equestrian area. So anyway, here we go. Loop, de loop. Now there's a road in the middle and two loops on the side. So it's kind of like a butterfly. You've got a loop on the right, a loop on the left, and that. So this first site here is site one. So we'll try to show you as many sites as we can and in keeping with our practice, if there are people out, we will not show the people. That's the rules. You got generators from eight to eight if you get on a non-electric site. There is a bathhouse. Okay, so that's the one loop right there but it's one way you can't turn there. Side two. Now they do have pictures. Those are the non-electric campers, um, campsites we just blew by, just right back there. Site three is right there. On the website, they have pictures of the campsites. It, they're pretty good, give you a good idea. Site four, site five, and site 28 is over there. Here are the non-electric sites. Site 1, 6, 8, 10, 11, 13, 15, 16, 17, 19, 21, 23, and 25. They can be reserved as electric or non-electric. That's interesting. I wonder how that works. Site 6 right there. And site 7, a pull-through. Fantastic views. There's the bridle path right there. Bridle trail to our left. I can't get 
to the left easily. So we're going to keep going. Site eight is a pull through. Yeah. This is a nice shady spot right there. Site nine. Site 10 is a back end. Yep, site 10 on the other side has some folks hanging out. Site 12 is right there. Picnic table, grill, electric water, no sewer. And there's, what side is that? 15. 15 to the left, but again, those left-hand sites, unless you want to look at Gary's nose, are kind of hard to get. Site 11 was a nice shady site. Site, site 16 is a deep pull through. Mm -hmm. And there's site 18, a pull through. 17 with shade. is a pull through. Can we move? <laughs> site 17 is on the other side. Look at this one. But again, I chose our site for the view. I wanted the mountains in the front. Site 19 to the left. And there's site 20 right there. Twenty-three. So you get an idea. This is the loop to the right in the A campground. Twenty-four is a pull through. I would say the shade is limited. And then we're back out here to the main road and we'll head down and catch the left side of this little area. There's a bathhouse. Passing the bathhouse again. So now we're back to where we were. And we're going to the left. 29 is right. There's a pull through right there to the left. They're in the shade. Thirty-one to pull through. Yeah, thirty-one right there. There is one on the other side. Thirty-two is is occupied, but anyway, that's right there to the right. And thirty-three. Now there are sites on the other side, but um, just so you can get an idea, nice level sites. Yeah, plenty 34 of room, is on the other side. Plenty of room between you and your neighbor, yes, and 34 is right across the way. It must have been 32 back there. That was a huge site. I couldn't see the number, but... Yeah. They do have a, a map that you can look at with pictures, so that's helpful. Um, usually there's pictures. That's a nice living area there, site 37. And what you see over there is uh, the uh, B loop. This will be over there in a minute. 39 is right there, and there's also sites on the left. There's a pull through coming up on the left. 42 on the left. Yeah, right, pull through. Right there with some nice yellow flowers. We just passed 41 on the right. There's 41 right there. And 43 right there. And here is 45. 44 on the left, pull through. There's us. Side 46. We fit, no problem. Room for our toad. And leveling the first go round. There's a, that's still 47, right? 48 is right there where that camper is. And that is it for A loop. Let's go check out B loop. Let's just come back out here to the road. And we're gonna go right. So heading up the road here to B loop. B. All sites are electrical. And this is like a circle, but I think it has like two roads off of it. Pull through There's sites. pull through sites there, back end sites over here. Okay, so they have back end, pull through, 
So we're going to drive down the middle and we can kind of give you an overview of both. May not be able to get numbers to you, but you can see. So back end sides are over there. on the edge and if you're looking at those those are going to be your like 1 through 11 12 on B uh, on yeah on the B loop these in the middle we got back uh, pull throughs on each side so let me show you right here at 20 uh, 22's over there 19 to the right so they just pull right through here 23 18, 24, so you can get an idea. 17, 16, 25, and again, just a reminder, those back end sites are over there on that far further area. There's six way over there. and so on it comes on around there's 14 that is right there is 14 a pull through and 13 and you see those back in sights now there's also there were also back in sights to the left of us and that was 30 uh 27 through 35. so those are a little bit harder to get but there are nice sites, plenty of room between you and your neighbor, so no worries there. So as we're coming on around here, there's site 46. And we're going down the back end row. Mm -hmm. Just the middle row. Site 44. I don't think this is the middle row, but it's okay. There's back end sites way over there and pull through sites in the two in the middle here. As you can see, like the first one. So you have back end, pull through, pull through, back end. So the back ends are over here. We're on the far side of this last loop. There's the bathhouse. Yep, there's 42 we just passed. Um, it's hard to show you those, but let me show you some of these pull-through sites. Uh, but we're on the wrong side. But you can see where they're at. And just for your reference, we are around the... The 50s and the 60s as far as pull-through. Go back around that way. Or you can cut left. Alright, we're going to cut around and go to the left. This one? Yeah. So you can get more of an idea. The back end side's okay. Stop right here. So 70, pull up a little bit. 70 is straight ahead as a back end, and 64 is that pull through right there. So 50s, these are inside pull throughs, and 63s, 63 is right there, pull through. 55, pull through. And right over here is 62 pull through. And then again, you've got back ends over there. And those are the 70s. So this little area has the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. 61 we just passed. 57 right there. 60 to the right. 58. It's hard to say about the shade because the trees, none of the trees are that big here. 59. 59 there is the last one as we head on out. Equestrian area and trailhead. The 50 year trail of the bright old trail. Nice stables. There's picnic tables. There's a the bathroom. There you go. Equestrian center. So coming back out here to the main road will take us to the other areas. More picnic area. Amphitheater. I'll take that back. Uh, is the amphitheater. Pretty. That is the bobcat amphitheater. Did you know that bobcats eat deer? 
I learned that today on my nature walk. <laughs> Did you know that? Bobcats are not vegan. <laughs> yeah, but I, I always thought they were too small to catch a deer. Maybe they catch ponds. Back out on the main road, heading to the trailhead area. How high are we right now? I think we're somewhere around 2,400 feet. 24, 28, some, somewhere in there. And we learned that those cactus right there, that those cacti are called saguaro. Saguaro. No G. And they're 50, they can live up to 200 years old, and they're 50 years old before they sprout arms. And birds make their homes in them. Just a little saguaro facts for you today. <laughs> Bands come and play here, Mr. D says. Performances. There's the trailhead. Uh, several trails leave from here. And we did the nature trail this morning. 1.3 miles. It's very pretty. Even though the map says 1.0 miles. They, they, the thing is, on these trails, a lot of them, you have to hike to get to the loop. The trail. <laughs> they seem to leave that little fact off. <laughs> There is a nature trail that we went on. We were up top there. Yeah, it was very nice. Very nice little walk. So plenty of parking here. Little band stage. What does that say? Music in the Mountain, next concert. They have a whole concert series listed. Mm -hmm. There are bathrooms over there and soda machines to cool you off. And there's a huge glare, so I can't even see that. Catalina Nature Program Children's Learning Site. Yep. So that was our tour of uh, Catalina State Park here in, uh, well, it's a Tucson address, but the, really the city of Catalina is right up the road. Mm -hmm. Which is right at the end of the park road. If you go straight across, there's all kinds of stores. You name it. Peach Wave Yogurt. Walmarts, Olive Gardens, Red Lobsters, there's all kind of stuff up in there if you want to need to go shopping or want to go out to eat or get a snack or whatever. Right across the street, literally. Now, this site for us was uh, plenty of room. We had 50 amp, we had water, no sewer at this park, but they do have the dump station. They do have the restroom here. I don't know whether the hot water was on, but the water wasn't hot, but it wasn't cold. It was like tepid, but it was okay. The, they do have a laundromat here, but I know the hot water is off of the laundromat because it says so on the sign. But um, it's two loops, like we showed you. There's an A loop and there's a B loop, so make sure you're at the right loop because the numbers are the same. Same numbers, yes. Yeah. So we had a little meet and greet with a couple of fellow uh, Facebook people, uh, Pat and Dan. Uh, had a nice conversation with them over there at their motor home. Very nice get together. Mm -hmm. we, enjoyed we enjoyed it. it. Yeah. It's a nice, nice meeting friends nice and making people. friends and telling stories because <laughs> everybody that RVs has a story. So um, today we're leaving, and there was an adventure in leaving, which I put on some pictures on Facebook. We had some rain, and the entrance road to this park is prone to flooding, and they gave us a little paper on our way in. She's got in her hand. When we got here. When we got here. And guess what? The road did flood. So <laughs> nobody could go in, nobody could go out. So they had the bulldozers there last night trying to bulldoze a path through all the dirt and debris. Yesterday, all day yesterday. yesterday. So last night they said they had one lane open for people to exit. Nobody could come in. Well, guess what? Overnight we had a big thunderstorm. And guess what happened? <laughs> Roads all blocked up again. <laughs> so they had the two bulldozers out again today. And they said at 1 o'clock it would be open enough for people to get out. I guess they can come back in, too. So it's getting close to 1 o'clock, so we're packing up to, to leave to head to our next spot. Right. Check Actually, out is check it, out is 11. No, 12. 12. Check out is at 12. And um, 
so just be forewarned if you're thinking about coming here just know that that this does happen that yeah. road does flood and it it happens make sure you have groceries right. yes yeah, someone was here without groceries yeah a couple of people had just flopped in here for the night and they got stuck yeah without yeah. Coffee but, and food. <laughs> but the notes, this advisory they gave us said we could be here for several days. So we are very thankful that they got it cleared away and we're going to be able to head on to our next spot. But I cannot leave here without talking about the trails. Oh, yeah, I forgot. About, how could I forget about the trails? I don't know. <laughs> so, what you went on a few trails. So, tell us <laughs> about the trails. I did, I went on the nature trail, which started out straight up couple hundred feet and then leveled out. Not, it wasn't a couple hundred feet. It was and then like we walked around feet. it and it was supposed to be a mile and it was 1.3 and then straight back down. But it was a good trail. They had some ruins or where there what used to be stuff up there. Well that was that's a nature trail. Yeah. The ruins were on the the Romero ruin trail. Yeah that was another one. Yeah. And that went up on a Mesa too a little bit, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, did. Yeah. That was three quarters of a mile. The birding trail also goes up on a little Mesa and um, a lot of them go up. <laughs> so, but it's not bad. There are several washes here, but if you, you have time, only a couple of miles is the Canyon Loop Trail. If you just went clockwise and came back, that would, you would see the prettiest part of that, but it is about a two mile, a little over two mile loop. And here, one of the big things that you will see are lots and lots, I think they say they have over 5,000 or 5,000 saguaro cacti here. And they are pretty darn amazing to look at. So they are everywhere. Um, there are several washes, like I said, that you go through. They're dry washes. I'm sure at certain times of year there's water in them. There was some water in some of the washes and there are creeks and there's also the hike to the Montrose Pools or if you were into bouldering, go on up to the Romero Pools. Yeah, but none of them are like really long. The biggest deal was that I couldn't drive up there after the flood. So I had, I could have, but it, they had the roadblock. So I had to hike one mile. It's one mile on the bridal trail to get to the trailhead. And then you do your hiking you have one mile back but miles and miles of trail here I did not get to do it all uh, much of it will go off into the Coronado National Forest I think or anyway there's a there's a national forest area there's also bighorn sheep that they are working to protect so some of those trails are closed certain times of the year there's horseback riding and you can ride your mountain bike um, what else Anything else I need to say about the trails? I don't know. That was a pretty good mouthful there. That was a pretty good yarn. Yeah, go early. Go early because it is, when the sun is out, it does get a little warm here. So it's better to go early. You'll just be more comfortable. I went yesterday during the day and, and I took my hiking umbrella with me. And I hiked to the Montrose Pool. I hiked to the trailhead, birding trail to the Montrose Pools and back to the campground. And it was right at six six miles, oh, well, I guess almost seven miles when it was all said and done. Love the trails here. Just let me say, they're they're nice. They're fairly easy. All you have is like the climb to get up on top of the Mesa areas and then you just kind of wind along. So nothing really technical unless you go up to the Romero pools. That's technical. But those are the trails I did. There's many more. It's worth a stop here for the hiking. Okay, hiking report is over. Now that we've had the, the trail review, we'll add <laughs> the video alongside of the trail review. You're walking out of the, you're out walking the further and further. So we're going to, uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap this up. Yes, we got to go. <laughs> so um, this is Gary and Sharon with Rough Road RV Life here at Catalina State Park. We like looking at freedom. Hope to see you on the road. Take care, stay safe. Bye. going I guess right yeah. like riding a motorcycle through mud or in the sand <laughs> well,
we got stuck, that bulldozer could pull us out. Yeah. Woo! Wow. We are thankful we got to leave on time. Wow, this whole, wow. So all the way, even up here, it's incredible. Almost to you exit the park. 